So today I'm going to talk about false prophets from the Bible. And we're going to talk about Deuteronomy 13 and 18. We talked about 18 in the last video a bit, but I want to go into more detail, especially on 13, so you get the full picture of what this test is for false prophets. But I want to back up just about five verses so you can see what the context of chapter 13 is. And so I'm going to start in Deuteronomy 12, verse 28, and I'm reading from the Apostles' Bible, and you already know why, because it uses the Septuagint instead of the corrupted Hebrew Old Testament that was made a thousand years after Christ to hide the prophecies that were proved, uh, used to prove Christ, uh, Jesus was Christ. Okay, so here we go. Beware and hearken. Oh, let me pull it up here so you can follow along. There we go. Beware and hearken, and you shall do all the commands which I charge you, that it may be well with you and with your sons forever, if you shall do that which is pleasing and good before the Lord your God. And if the Lord your God shall utterly destroy the nations from before you, to which you go to possess, to inherit their land, and you shall inherit it and dwell in their land, Take heed to yourself that you seek not to follow them after they are destroyed before you, saying, How do the, these nations act towards their gods? I will do likewise. You shall not do so to your God, for they have sacrificed to their gods the abominations of the Lord, which he hates, for they burn their sons and their daughters in fire to their gods. Every word that I command you this day you shall observe to do, you shall not add to it or diminish from it. That's how we get to chapter 13. So you see especially that you, he's not saying that you're not to um, go and, and sacrifice to their gods, that too. But he's saying, um, don't go and say, oh, how did they do that with their gods in worshiping their gods? I'm going to do the same with Yahweh. You shall not do so to your God, not to their gods, to your God. Do not imitate the way that they worship, the way that they do their service, the sacrifices that they conduct for their gods with Yahweh. Do not do that. So, that's the context. It's very strong against the other gods, but not only the other gods, but the practices that were done to those other gods being incorporated into the practice done with the living God. Now we get on to chapter 13. Chapter 13 is basically in two parts. It's um, The first part is about the false prophets, and the second part is about whether one of your family members does what the false prophets do about foreign gods, and then not having pity on them at all, and you being the first to stone them. Okay, so let's go ahead with verse 1, and that is 13.1, the Apostles' Bible and if there arise within you a prophet or one who dreams a dream, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, something that you go, wow, wow. And the sign or the wonder come to pass, they happen, which he spoke to you, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which you know not. You shall not hearken to the words of that prophet, or the dreamer of that dream. I told you, the devil comes by every night when I try to record something. Sometimes you can hear it, sometimes I cut it short just in time. But there you go. You shall not hearken to the words of that prophet or the dreamer of that dream, because the Lord your God is testing you to see whether you love your God with all your heart and with all your soul. It doesn't say to test what he says. It says, don't listen. Don't even listen to what he says. If you hear that he is calling you to serve other gods, do not even listen to him. It says, you shall not hearken. Shall not is an imperative. So it's more appropriate to say, you must not hearken to the words of that prophet or the dreamer of that dream. Why? Because the Lord your God is testing you. He's watching. He wants to see if in your heart and in your soul you have set him aside as the only God and you love him. So it says, whether you love 
your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So those who say, those Christians who say that you cannot fear God and love God are liars. You have both of them side by side in the Old Testament as well. They do not understand either fear or love if they say that. Because you must have both when it comes to God. Verse 4, you shall follow the Lord your God and fear him. Right there. First it says he's testing to see if you love your God. Then it says you must, because shall is must, right? Must follow the Lord your God and fear him. So you have both love and fear. They're both required. There's the devil again. There he is. All right. So it says, and you shall hear his voice. And attach yourselves to him. And you shall hear his voice. And attach yourselves to him. That voice of the Lord is critical. And it shows that everyone hears his voice. And you shall hear his voice and attach yourselves to him. But understand that you cannot hear his voice without fear of the Lord. If you do not fear the Lord, you will not hear his voice. Verse 5, and that prophet or that dreamer of a dream shall die. For he has spoken to make you heir from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, who redeemed you from bondage, to thrust you out of the way which the Lord your God commanded you to walk in. This prophet and this dreamer is trying to push you out of the way, push you off of this path that God set you on, this narrow path that Jesus talks about to everlasting life. And this prophet and this dreamer, they're trying to push you off of that path. That's what it says right here. To thrust you out of the way which the Lord your God commanded you to walk in. That's that prophet or that dreamer's purpose. And that is why that prophet and that dreamer must die in the Old Testament. So shall you abolish the evil from among you. So even though we do not any longer execute people based on these principles, we still must treat them as if they are dead in our community. They must go on to a list where they are treated as if they are dead. We must abolish the evil from among us. It shall not be allowed. And that's with this prophet or this dreamer. So that's what this says about false prophets in chapter 13. Very nice chapter for that, right? <laughs> chapter 13. So we are to <clears throat> abolish the evil from among us. Notice that God calls this prophet and this dreamer evil. They did not just sin. He calls them evil. That means that they must be abolished from among us. <clears throat> it says, so shall you abolish the evil from among you by killing him, it says. Verse 6, <clears throat> this is where it gets into the family members. And if your brother, by your father or mother, so that, that can be either your full brother or your half-brother, or your son or daughter, or your wife in your bosom, or friend who is equal to your own soul, this very close friend, if they entreat you secretly, if they seek you secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known. He's not, it's not a qualifier there. He's stating, which neither you nor your fathers have known of the gods of the nations that are round about you, who are near you or at a distance from you. 
from one end of the earth to the other. You shall not consent to him, neither shall you hearken to him. So do not agree with him. Do not agree with him to go do that. Don't even listen any more to him. As soon as as he says that, stop listening to him. He says, you shall not, you must not hearken to him. That's hear him, listen to him. And your eye shall not spare him. You shall feel no regret for him. Neither shall you at all protect him. Protect him from what? We can pretty much guess what it is. You shall surely report concerning him. That means tell the leaders. And your hands shall be upon him among the first to slay him, to kill him, and the hands of all the people at the last. So you will be among the first to kill him and the rest of the people afterwards. And they shall stone him with stones, and he shall die, because he sought to draw you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. God's the one who freed you from bondage, from slavery, from the wickedness of Egypt, which was the strongest, most powerful, most cultured nation on the face of the planet. And you served it as a slave. Pour your life out, and God rescued you out of there. That's who these people were. These were the people who were actually rescued out of Egypt, physically rescued. It was that generation he's speaking to. And here's someone who's trying to draw you away from the Lord your God, who did those miracles through Moses to rescue you out of Egypt. The equivalent of Egypt today is the United States. And if you're in bondage, pouring your life out, and you have no alternative, and God rescues you out of that through miracles, where they don't want to let you go. Now you might be seeing this video 10 years down the line here when this actually happens. It might. It might happen. I'm not prophesying. I'm saying that if in the future you're watching this video and it has happened where you cannot leave the United States freely anymore, then you are in Egypt. What if God frees you through miracles and then someone among you who is freed with you who experienced that freedom from bondage from Egypt, then starts to try to seduce you into thinking about worshiping other gods who had nothing to do with your salvation. And they shall stone him with stones, and he shall die because he sought to draw you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall not again Do according to this evil thing among you. So when you do kill someone who tries to seduce you to follow other gods, worship other gods, and abandon Yahweh, and this is what he's telling them, and you as a people kill him, execute him, stoning him to death, and then the rest of the people hear about it, then it will prevent them from going and doing the same evil. It says, and if, verse 12, and if in one of your cities, which the Lord God gives you to dwell in, you shall hear men saying, evil men have gone out from you and have caused all the inhabitants of their land to fall away, saying, let us go and worship other gods whom you knew not. Then you shall inquire and ask and search diligently. And behold, if the thing is clearly true and this abomination has taken place among you, So notice, you have to investigate it thoroughly, diligently, so that you know for sure, 100%, that this is actually true. Verse 15, you shall utterly destroy all the inhabitants of that land with the edge of the sword. You shall solemnly curse it and all things in it. 
and all its spoils you shall gather into its public ways, and you shall burn the city with fire and all its spoils publicly before the Lord your God. And it shall be uninhabited forever. It shall not be built again. They are not to take a single thing from that place. They are to take all the things out into the streets and burn absolutely everything. And no one will ever, ever be allowed to live there again. So 17, and none of the cursed things shall cleave to your hand. Don't bring it back. That the Lord may turn from his fierce anger and show you mercy and pity you and multiply you as he swore to your fathers. He still wants to fulfill his promise to you, but you've got to get rid of this evil. He promised it even before you were born, it says. He swore to your fathers. But he can't do that if you hold on to this evil, if this evil cleaves to your hand, if you can't let it go. Verse 18, if you will hear the voice of the Lord your God. There it is, there it is again. If you will hear the voice of the Lord your God, which means you must listen for the voice of the Lord your God. To keep his commandments and obey the voice. All that I charge you this day to do that which is good and pleasing before the Lord your God. Seems pretty clear. So this gives us some sort of standard on which to measure and weigh these prophets and these dreamers. They've multiplied like cockroaches. Someone needs to step on them. Someone needs to fumigate the place. So we're starting here. We've already done one. I've already got another one already planned. It's, it's a really big cockroach. It's going to take a bit to get rid of that one. And I've already run across a couple more in the process. So we're going to have a lot of these false prophets, these false dreamers coming along our way here on the channel. But we have to be grounded in the scriptures to understand how to weigh that. So let's go on to Deuteronomy 18 next. Before we get to chapter 18, I want to read you chapter 15, because it is a great promise, but it tells us how we are to behave also. So chapter 15, every seven years you shall make a release, and this is the ordinance of the release. You shall release every private debt which your neighbor owes you, and you shall not ask payment of it from your brother, for it has been called a release to the Lord your God. Of a stranger you shall ask again whatsoever he has of yours, but to your brother you shall release his debt to you. For thus there shall not be a poor person in the midst of you. For the Lord your God will surely bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you by inheritance, that you should inherit it. So he's saying that you are to release the debt of your brother in your land, your brother in the church in this case, Every seven years, whatever they owe, it's gone. Zero. But to the stranger, to the one outside the church, no, you still require that. That way, those within the church will never be poor. So, and that will cause you to flourish in the land, in the inherited land. Verse 5, and if you shall indeed hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, there it is again, hear, listen, to the voice of the Lord your God, and keep and do all these commandments. Obey what he says. As many as I charge you this day, this day, not the next, this day, what I tell you to do this day, do. And that's the model that Jesus set down for us, is to get to a solitude place and listen to the Father and wait for him to tell you what to do this day. Verse 6, For the Lord your God has blessed you in the way of which he spoke to you. Then you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And you shall rule over many nations, but they shall not rule over you. And if there be shall be in the midst of you a poor man from among your brothers, in one of your cities in the land, which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not harden your heart. Neither shall you by any means close up your hand from your brother who is in need. 
You shall surely open your hands to him, and shall lend to him as much as he wants according to his need. Take heed to yourself that there be not a secret thing in your heart, a lawlessness and iniquity, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is approaching, and your eye shall be evil to your brother that is in need, and you shall not give to him, and he shall cry against you to the Lord, and there shall be great sin in you. Because the seventh, day, the seventh year is approaching, and you know that if you give it to him now, it's going to be forgiven, and you won't give any, get anything back. It says, don't do that in your heart. Don't plot like that. Don't plan like that to withhold from your brother who's in need. Just because the seventh year is coming up, and it's going to be forgiven very soon, and you won't get much of it back, if any. It says, don't do that. Because then it's going to be a great sin in you. And God is going to be angry with you. Verse 10, you shall surely give to him and you shall lend to him as much as he wants according as he is in need. And you shall not grudge in your heart as you give to him, because on this account, the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all things on which you lay, you shall lay your hand. He will bless you. If you are this way with your brother, he will bless you in everything that you do. Verse 11, for the poor shall not fail off your land. Therefore, I charge you to do this thing, saying, you shall surely open your hands to your poor brother and to him that is distressed upon your land. And if your brother or sister, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, are sold to you, he shall serve you six years, and in the seventh year you shall send him out free from you. And when you shall send him out free from you, you shall not send him out empty, you shall give him provision for the way from your flock and from your grain and from your wine as the Lord your God has blessed you. So you shall give to him and you shall remember that you also were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore, I charge you to do this thing. And not only remember when they were leaving Egypt, God caused the people to be giving them all of their treasures Please hurry up, leave. Here, take this with you so you hurry up and leave faster. That's what they were saying. So the prophecy was fulfilled. Verse 16, And if he should say to you, I will not go out from you because he continues to love you and your house, because he is well with you, then you shall take an awl, that's A-W-L, and bore his ear through to the door, and he shall be your servant forever. And in like manner shall you do to your male servant. It shall not seem hard to you when they are sent out free from you, because your servant has served you six years according to the annual hire of a hireling. So the Lord your God shall bless you in all things whatsoever you may do. Every firstborn that shall be born among your cows and your sheep, you shall sanctify the males to the Lord your God. You shall not work with your firstborn calf, and you shall not shear the firstborn of your sheep. You shall eat it before the Lord year by year in the place which the Lord your God shall choose, you and your house. And if there be in it a blemish, if it is lame or blind, an evil blemish, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. You shall eat it in your cities, the unclean in you, and the clean shall eat it in like manner as the doe or the deer. Only... You shall not eat the blood. You shall pour it out on the earth as water. Okay, so now let's have a look at 18. I was going to go straight into 18, but at the end of 17 is very relevant because it sets the tone again for 18. So it says, um, it says here, verse 11, you shall do according to the law and to the judgment, which they shall declare to you, you should not swerve to the right hand or to the left from any sentence which they shall report to you. Who are they? Right? We'll, we'll find out here. And any man that shall act in haughtiness, like pride, so as not to hearken to the priest who stands to minister in the name of the Lord your God, or the judge who shall preside in those days, that man shall die. And you shall remove the evil one out of Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and shall no more commit impiety. This word means irreverence. 
It's literally irreverence. Not revering the priest who is standing and ministering in the name of the Lord your God or the judge who is presiding in those days to make judgments of God between people. That's what's happening on the internet. Is it there are some of us, not many of us, but some of us who are actually appointed to serve before the Lord our God. And there are people, person after person after person after person, who are behaving irreverently like there is no one serving before the Lord our God. And I swear that God sees it. And God is not sleeping. It says 14, And when you shall enter into the land which the Lord your God gives you, and shall inherit it and dwell in it, and shall say, I will set a ruler over me, as also the other nations round about me, you shall surely set over you the ruler whom the Lord your God shall choose. Of your brothers you shall set over you a ruler. You shall not have power to set over you a stranger, a foreigner, because he is not your brother. Verse 16, for he shall not multiply, it's, it's must not, for he must not multiply to himself horses, and he must not by any means turn the people back to Egypt, lest he should multiply to himself horses. For the Lord said, you shall not return that way again. That means for us also, we shall not return back towards the world again. We've been rescued out of it. And when we set someone over us who tries to turn us back to the world, we must take him out. He must be removed from that leadership. 17. And he shall not multiply to himself wives, lest his heart turn away. That's a prophecy about Solomon. And he shall not greatly multiply to himself silver and gold, which is Solomon. 18. And when he shall be established in his government, then shall he write for himself this repetition of the law into a book by the hands of the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord your God, and to keep all these commandments and to observe these ordinances. This is why we have the Bible. This is why every one of us, as many can read, should read it all the days of our lives, to keep in mind what it says we must do, and we must do those things. 20. That his heart be not lifted up above his brothers. He fear the Lord and obey those commandments so that his heart isn't lifted above his brothers. That he depart not from the commandments on the right hand or on the left. That he doesn't stop doing them by going to the left or to the right. He keeps doing them. That he and his sons may reign long in his dominion among the children of Israel. Now we get to chapter 18. It's not so long. Chapter 18, verse 1, the priests, the Levites, even the whole tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. The burnt offerings, well, we can skip this part because it has nothing to do with the uh, prophets. So let's get down to the prophets here. Okay. Verse 9, and when you shall have entered into the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to do according to the abominations of those nations. We heard that before. In one of the chapters just before, you shall not imitate them in the way that they worshipped their gods. Don't take those practices and use it with the living God. There shall not be found in you one who purges his son or his daughter with fire, or one who uses divination, or one who deals with omens or a sorcerer. Those are not to be done among us at all. Employing an incantation, like we do with Romans 10, 9 through 10, or shall I say the one saved, always saved do. It's an incantation they believe saves him. Or one who has in him a divining spirit, not talking about the Holy Spirit. Or an observer of signs who questions the dead. 
Consulting the dead is forbidden. Verse 12, For everyone that does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. They haven't just sinned. They are utterly detestable. He absolutely hates this. For because of these abominations, the Lord shall destroy them from before your face. Someone who does that will be destroyed right in front of your face. So, 13, you shall be perfect before the Lord your God for all these nations whose land you shall inherit. They will listen to omens and divinations, but the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. Verse 15, he's not saying it doesn't work. He's saying you're not allowed to do it. And the reason is because those divinations and those omens and such are delivered by by demons, which literally means distributors of fortune. 15. The Lord your God shall raise up to you a prophet from among your brethren like me, like Moses. Him shall you hear, talking about Jesus, according to all the things which you desired from the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, We will not again hear the voice of the Lord your God, And we will not any more see his great fire, this great fire, lest we die. They were terrified of it. They didn't, didn't want to hear the voice of God, and they didn't want to see this great fire. They were terrified they would die. 17, and the Lord said to me, they have spoken rightly all that they have said to you. I will, I will raise up to them a prophet from among their brethren like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them as I shall command him. And whoever shall not hearken to all the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I will take vengeance on him. Right here is the promise that God makes, that if you do not listen to the words of Jesus, which are the very words of God, he says here, he will only speak what he's heard from me. If you do not listen to the words of Jesus, God will take vengeance on you. He will punish you. Verse 20, But whichever prophet that shall impiously speak, that means irreverently speak, without reverence, just casually speak, not considering that he's speaking on behalf of the living God who can destroy him. I can't snap today because I'm wounded. So <laughs> imagine the snap, okay? That God can destroy him instantly, just like that. That's irreverent if you don't consider that. If you think, oh, this is just words from God. If I don't get it right, it's okay. I'm human. I'm not perfect. If I you know, make a mistake, it doesn't matter. No, that's irreverent. That's exactly what he's saying. So he says, it. but whichever prophet that shall impiously speak, irreverently speak in my name, a word, that means one word, a word, which I have not commanded him to speak, even a single word, and whosoever shall speak in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So it's not just those who speak in the name of other gods. It's also those who irreverently speak even a single word in the name of the Lord that he did not say to speak. It says, but whichever prophet that shall irreverently, impiously speak in my name a word which I have not commanded him to speak. So if you speak a word God didn't tell you to speak, then you have broken this. That's why it's so important that you speak every single word correctly when you say that you're speaking from God. Or even if you do that, and then you speak it in the name of other gods, trying to mislead people to worship other gods, that prophet shall die. But if you shall say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Whatever words that prophet shall speak in the name of the Lord and they shall not come true and not come to pass. This is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken wickedly, not only irreverently, wickedly. You shall not spare him. You shall not let him live. So again, you are to treat him as if he's not alive, because we don't kill people for that nowadays. But we do treat him as if he were dead. 
And so we're beginning a list of these false prophets. And you know who's going on is number one because he's number 001. And I'm going to keep a list there and you can go there and check on it and find out if that channel is on that list. If it is, you know there's a video with it. You can go watch the video to verify that he's a false prophet. And do not listen to him. Do not even go to the channel. Just completely act as if they're dead and go on. Listen to someone else. May the Lord bless you as you seek him with all your heart. And you false prophets, I'm coming for you. Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them and we try to respond to all. Get on over to our website, The Rooted Word, and start reading the translation and also the articles we've posted. It's at therootedword.com, therootedword.com. And may the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.